Nintendo's Mole Mania on Game Boy, released in 1996, or 97 if you prefer. Take note, this is a redux of something I did two years ago. By now, it should go without noting that this was regarded by many as one of Shigeru Miyamoto's lesser-known titles. Yes, the same Miyamoto responsible for every widely known franchise that dare not speak their name or description. As usual, before I kick off this Redux analysis, I'd like to pass along my customary acknowledgments to the Boston Open Screen team that is Healy, Van Voorhees, and Atwood, Bitbar Salem, Geekbeat Radio, Boston 8-Bit, The Nerdfit Network, Magfest, Orlando Boom, The Proto Men, Mariachi Entertainment System, David Wise 5, DJ Cutman, DIY The Show, Mike Lindquist from Wayland, Massachusetts, Mike Maverick Lafitte from Waynesboro, Mississippi, Deidre Fisher from Welford, South Carolina, and finally Gary Summers from the Northeast Comic Con or South Coast Comic Con and Collectibles Extravaganza. With these out of our system, onto the main story. A suave, cunning mole by the name of Muddy, aka Moguranya, hence this game's original alternate Japanese title, is out to rescue his kidnapped wife, presumably Maggie, and seven unit offspring from the clutches of a merciless and impatient dickwad ass ad human farmer Jinpei. <laughs> How, one might ask? Get this, by traversing and digging his way through the latter's own domain, namely Jinbei Land, and wiping out every opposing creature and or rogue human in his path. Some arduous path he's got lined up for himself, don't you think? Concerning the gameplay, what could one possibly expect but another top view action puzzle caper akin to the likes of Cuckoo Land and Devil World, two other Nintendo titles, with the latter not seeing an American release due to obvious religious reasons no less. HAL Laboratory's Adventures of Lolo, DreamWorks and NCS's Trampoline Terror, aka its cancelled Japanese counterpart Explode Star, Hudson Soft and Game Freak's Mendel Palace, aka Quinty, Natsume's Amazing Penguin, SNK Playmore's Dexterity, and the like. In each area, not only are you burrowing your way underground to reach inaccessible areas, you're also pushing and pulling environmental objects to traverse your way through every stretch of land while outwitting every common territorial adversary roaming said stretches, running the gamut from alligators, penguins, T-Rex, pufferfish, canaries, beings made of mud, porcupines, aka what this game refers to as weevils. The list goes on and on and fucking on. Hell, in addition, you're even hinted on what to do via helpful signs posted within each area by Grandpa Maul. But whatever you do, don't rely on them too fucking often. Anyways, control-wise, the traditional D-pad migrates old Muddy horizontally and vertically, that is, north and south, like Zelda and Pokemon, obviously, both above and underground, while B and A allow him to grab a hold of or pull any object, as well as dig underground or resurface above, individually. And to top it off, you can even study the enemy patterns underground, hence the old peeping Tom technique via the B button. While Select does dick all, except for restarting any area from square one in case you fucked up or exiting an already embarked area, Start access as a menu informing you of how many items you've acquired, on which I'll elaborate further eventually. The cabbages you've salvaged, the time spent in any single stage, and your choices of leaving this menu, also performed using Start, escaping or going back, if you will, to your previously cleared area or going back to the main stage select area. Regarding the items, Muddy can acquire a map to further display the terrain he's in, not to mention those of all the top secret bonus areas and end boss confrontations, a radar locator for pinpointing your current location, a life recovery potion, and a surrender card, which, upon usage, will allow you to easily skip through your current land area while nullifying every obstacle and enemy within, to name a few. In tandem with cabbages, you can salvage underground for instant life recovery. Of course, you only have to bury five of them. Shifting right back into the main gameplay aspect, as mentioned before, hauling ass both above ground and underground, while not only putting the old kibosh on those territorial cumbucket animal foes, and solving even the most intricate and mind-raping environmental puzzles. I'm looking at you again, Light Crusader, but also knocking out the concrete slab with the bowling ball to access new areas isn't just cataclysmically hard, oh fuck no. It's more like a time-consuming chore that'll wear your ass out faster than a 250,000-mile cross-country marathon without any vehicles, running on two hands blindfolded and upside down with both a police nightstick and an Excalibur sword shoved halfway up one's ass. And remember those end-boss confrontations I was gloating about not too goddamn long ago? Upon reaching the extreme-ass end of every maze stage, you'll find yourself squaring off against the following. 
kangaroo, a demented and manic kangaroo that lobs its gloves for shits and gigs. Christ, even Kangoo from Clay Fighter 2 Judgment Clay would be so damn proud. Here's what you do when he leaps, align the fins with his shadow to dispatch his marsupial ass. Sundas, a flamboyant living sun, hellbent on unleashing its blinding flash to all who cross his path. Christ, SMB3 much? Prior to said flash attack, dig underground to take cover from the light, and launch the bowling ball horizontally, as the rednecks would say, near the sun, bitch. Or in this case, near the sun, bitch. Funton, a living mutant weight whose only means of havoc wreaking are making ultra-high leaps of faith, thus landing on its steel firm noggin, and spinning out of control upon being exposed to any damage. For him, just make a hole under where he is about to land, and he should be no goddamn trouble whatsoever. A crazed and skull blitzed beyond belief mad wrencher, just place the dethroned pipes in his direction to launch back the wrenches he throws at you. A family of four weevil children led by their one and only parent, plus various other grotesque, out of place hostile parties running said field from a weightlifting mud wrestler slash mud ballerina couple. A giant snowman which splits into smaller versions of itself upon getting nailed. Bad Mr. Frosty, eat your fucking heart out! And finally, that pissed ant bastard farmer Jinbei himself. Now, unless you're strategy savvy, memorizing and taking heed of every environmental pattern within each area you occupy, especially when it comes to these intense showdowns, no less. Expect those insolent, obnoxious, mindless, dickless, mule fellatioing, ass licking, steam and slurping, triceratops teabagging, ant escaping, hemorrhage inducing, boner devouring, genital and rectal wart plugging pieces of pterodactyl shit to make you their eternal, whorish sumka in a way you've never even read about or heard of, thus making you squeal non stop like the old Scarlet Pimpernel. Upon eliminating your target offender, your current maze is cleared, thus a giant cabbage falls from the heavens, revealing each missing mole child, with the exception of the final area, of course. Following a compassionate yet comical post-stage cutscene centering on Muddy's reunion with his offspring, which you'll see every time for the record, and depending on not only completion time, but also how much of the area you've embarked, how many secrets you've found, how many cabbages you've buried and salvaged, and whether or not you've succeeded in the soon-to-be-elaborated top-secret bonus scenes, your current score will be tallied, up to a possible 100, in which case, MAKE EVERY GODDAMN EFFORT COUNT, AND RINSE, LATHER, FUCKING, REPEAT! While the controls are far from a star craving bitch to get the hang of, a central methodical gameplay element, as perplexing and out of focus as it can become at times, in terms of your awareness of where every environmental aid is used and one's self-reliance on said aids, in tandem with the previously addressed end-boss confrontations, amongst other stumbling blocks you'll face within, hence the limelight of our next acknowledged subject, I might add, is nothing short of forthright and by the numbers, and let me tell you, that's no horseshit either. In regards to Mole Mania's challenge, expect a piss ton of them, regardless of your intended progress. For starters, those game-changing environmental aids, you know, the bowling balls, weights and detouring pipes, the latter two of which are unable to be pulled for the record, barrels, direction-changing panels, you name it. While some of them can be a great help in terms of wiping your rivals out, not to mention stage-appropriate puzzle-solving elements and other necessary trial-and-error strategies, others may turn out to be a massive progress hindrance, depending on your own decisions alone, of course, in which case, retreat to your previous field and return in order to make your current one reset itself. Take the barrels, for instance. While they're used as a weapon, just like the bowling ball, which, by the way, respawns in its initial place upon falling into any hull, they can also be used to plug up holes for safer travels with the bowling ball. But whatever you do, avoid throwing them into the wrong goddamn holes! In addition, aside from the life recovery potion, you're free to visit Grandpa Mole in time of need, in terms of having your health replenished, as well as a helpful hint he throws your way. But take note, visiting him more than once, hence what I like to call NPC pestering or patronizing, will result in the most dire punishments in history. Should you also happen to have your ass obliterated at any point, that is if you've lost all four heart portions, like in Darkwing Duck by Capcom, the third of which triggers the usual you're fucked alarm, you're taken directly to the game over screen, at which point you're able to either A, pick up right where you miscalculated your approaches, or B, just earn yourself a one way ticket back to the title. And now, here's the big front cover feature about which I've been dying to report the top secret bonus rounds. Should you happen to come across any circled star within the stage area via an alternate underground path, whether by pure luck or accident, if mostly the former, you're instantly warped woman the blink of an eye. During these rounds, you have to bury all the cabbages underground while keeping the uptight as fuck arch nemesis Jinbei at bay within the time limit. No pun intended, I assure everyone. Those same cabbages can also be used to distract the mindless son of a bitch in order for you to buy yourself some much needed time, of which I highly suggest taking the most mandatory advantage. If you manage to successfully bury all the cabbages, you're given 20 extra points to add to your final stage score. 
However, should the Big J happen to clobber your little mammal ass, a chunk of your duration gets severely deducted. If it runs out completely, it's your lost tough shit, in which case you'll have to warp back the fuck in to try again, and expect to fuck yourself over on many occasions than one. Believe me, I have to go through these goddamn mini stages at least five times, even on my own motherfucking Game Boy no less. And before I forget, this same mini round is also used in the two player versus mode, that is, if you secured another Game Boy, another copy of this game, and a link cable, the latter of which can be a pain in the ass to come by nowadays. Aside from these, take every helpful, advice laden hint and word to the wise into account, unless you're dying for an all inclusive nightmare without any end whatsoever. <laughs> For a Game Boy game released near the ass end of its soon to be non goddamn existent lifespan, around the time when N64 and Pokemon were all the rage, no less. The graphics are far from a repulsive area of abominations, but on the surface, nothing special to write home about either. In addition to all the semi recognizable mean and supporting characters, their opposing rivals, animation wise, and foreground textures aren't something to be mocked at, as they're not only true to life, as many might fathom, but are so much better on the Super Game Boy, with which this game was also compatible at the time, for the record. Sure, the latter graphical portions tend to repeat themselves in between each area, if not frequently, but they're still so fucking unique on their own steam that anyone would hardly mind in the least. Music and sound-wise, conducted masterfully by Taro Bondo, later of F-Zero X fame, alongside Hajime Wakai, and the resident sound engineer for almost every major Nintendo hit since Super Mario Kart, circa 92, both for the company's Kyoto-based EAD division and the recently established EPD division, the former of which Bondo joined back in 87, the themes possess something of an addictive, inescapable flair to them that dare not speak its name, and admittedly enough, fluctuate a ton throughout each interim, but correlating sound effects are somewhat lively, if at times unsettling, most notably the enemy deaths, the concrete slide being knocked down, and Muddy intensely advancing his strength as he's about to push or pull any object, but yet again, aren't a goddamn thing at which to be scorned either. My top 6 songs from this game alone are as follows, the opening menu, the forest theme for stages 1, 3, and 7, with the latter heard in one section, the beach theme for stages 2 and 6, the boss theme, the pre-level 8 theme also heard when you're short of time during the cabbage salvaging bonus rounds, or if you're pissing off Grandpa Mole too much, and finally the snowy forest theme for areas 5 and 7. Regarding the replay value, thanks as a whole to the methodical and fundamental, not to mention nerve-wracking top-view puzzle mechanics that this heinously eclipsed and unintentionally overlooked handheld title has to offer, in tandem with the emo heartstring tugging and funny bone tickling cinematics, it should become abundantly clear as Grey Goose Vodka that, as the front of the box states, you'll dig Mole Mania indeed. So please, take my advice, or don't, as tempting as Pokemon, Animal Crossing, Pikmin, and Katamari Damacy are, sweep those motherfuckers under the rug, and switch to this hijink slate and puzzle cape Yet again, no pun intended. Trust me, it'll make Tetris Attack look like fucking solitaire in a way you've never imagined. Therefore, in summation, what's my cast iron final verdict? In full realization of how this classic was left under the goddamn radar, even during its release, one might add, I see no point in reiterating all the pros and cons Mole Mania harbors, the former of which excessively outweigh the latter for the record, or why many should at least give it a fighting chance, if hell, way more. So, what are you waiting for? The launch of Splatoon 3? Do yourself an enormous favor and dig to your heart's content for Mole Mania. I assure you, there's no way on the many corners of our beloved planet that you'll be disenchanted or unmotivated by its boundless charm and wits. Until then, this is the Hardcore Retro Guide proudly signing off.